In the absence of the Mayor and the Deputy Chairperson tonight, can I ask for a nomination to chair this council meeting? Councillor Harvey. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Harvey, please. Is that seconded? Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> Is that agreed? Councillor Harvey. <laughs> Colleagues, welcome to this meeting and a particularly warm welcome to everyone in the public gallery. Can I remind everybody that all mobile phones should be turned to silent for the duration of the meeting and can I ask all members to ensure that they use their microphones. Also please note that as usual the council will be filming and recording this meeting. This will include people sitting in the public gallery. A copy of the film will be uploaded to the Knowsley Council YouTube site in due course following this meeting. Can I also refer everyone to the order paper that's been placed in front of them and on each seat in the public gallery? And we'll start with item one minutes. Are the minutes agreed? Thank you. Item two, declarations of interest. Not received, Chair. Thank you. Item three, mayoral engagements. Can you please note these? Thank you. Item four, public question time. Um, Although one public question has been received, is Mr Gittins available to ask his question? In that case, that question will fall. We'll move straight on then to item five, which is the Corporate Peer Challenge Outcome. Can I invite Councillor Andy Moorhead to move the recommendations? Can I move down recommendations, please? Councillor Murphy? I do, Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from no. members of the Council? Councillor Cashman. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> um, just to say that we welcome the report and um, we even had a few nice things to say about uh, the Council and even the Council leader to an extent, so uh, that was <laughs> our part in the process. Uh, the, you know, the miracles do happen, I suppose. Um, we've been saying uh, for years there is something in this report that I am a little bit concerned about, uh, and we have been saying this for years, that the Council is too directed by officers and we need, uh, as members, uh, to be allowed to be empowered and to lead on behalf of the people that we represent. Uh, so it's encouraging to see that the peer reviewers confirm this uh, directive style and that it should change. It would be interesting to know if the leader agrees with the peer review uh, team's finding about the directive management style in the council uh, and that it does need to change. And it would also be interesting to know what will change in practice for us as members and for residents as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Are there any other um, questions from members of the Council? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moorhead, do you wish to reply? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks, uh, colleagues, for the opportunity to speak to this peer review. As you all know, uh, I actually invited the, the peer challenge team in from the Open Government Association to come in and do an independent assessment on this authority and to see what sort of progress that we are making. As a result, the team visited Nosley a week last November and once again I want to thank everybody, including our opposition, who was interviewed and took part in the focus groups as part of the process. After the visit, the team took some time to pull together a full report and we then had to develop a short action plan to respond to their findings. The Peer Challenge Report and Action Plan were both circulated last month. I wanted to record it formally as part of tonight's meeting, not least because it's important for us all to share some of the highlights. But before I do that, I want to point out that this was a voluntary review. The easiest thing in the world would have been not to do it. But gone are the days when this council don't welcome advice, or didn't welcome advice. I'm very pleased to say, gone also are the days when we had anything to hide. As far as I know, none of our neighbours neighbouring councils volunteered for a peer challenge yet. I understand Liverpool, their choice, not mine, might be going next. 
I push for nobody to volunteer for one because I'm so proud of what we actually deliver and what we do for our communities. And the good news is that the report has confirmed just what a great job we all are doing. The report recognises and confirms the massive improvements which we have made in recent years. You can see some of those achievements highlighted in the slides which are running on the screen to the rooms right now. I think sometimes we take things for granted, but getting to where we are now has been a huge achievement, given the hammering we've taken as those of government cuts. <coughs> the report comments about how well regarded we are amongst our neighbours. We clearly have respect for what is described as political and managerial leadership. After receiving this report, and a number of other pieces of feedback over the last year, I think we can actually justify the claim to be one of the best local authorities in the northwest of the country, if not the whole country, for our size. I want to pay tribute today to the work of the Labour Group and also to the Council's excellent officer team. We spend a lot of time focusing on our difficulties and challenges, but this report is an opportunity to take breath and say with confidence we are getting it right. The report makes some detailed process recommendations, one of which is to refocus on the way we pour performance and risks. That is why I recommended at a recent budget meeting that there should be quarterly cabinet reports to give a clear picture of the things we are doing well and the things which might be keeping us awake at night. I should point out that this recommendation came because the team found that we are reporting too much not too little. The team recognised the value of scrutiny and wanted us to make sure that we continue to get the best out of our arrangements. Looking forward, I will be encouraging all cabinet members and cabinet lead members to attend as many of the relevant scrutiny meetings as they can. The aim of scrutiny is to involve as many members as possible in the council's work and make sure that we get the best whole team approach as possible. Scrutiny officers scrutiny offers us an opportunity to feed into the developments of our policies, particularly in controversial or contentious areas. And we need to make sure that we use scrutiny meetings to look in depth at options before we, we take significant decisions, as well as looking at the outcomes after we've taken such decisions. I think you'll agree that's a step change. I know that you will have noticed the recommendations considering the strong leader model. The corporate peer challenge team suggested that we should consider the strong leader model rather than recommending that we should adopt it. I have considered their, their suggestions and along with my colleagues within the Labour group, we believe we, we've got no appetite at this moment and I brought that to the group to change the council's current governance arrangements given that they serve as well for so many years in the past. It's worth also noting that the Labour Party is currently undertaking its own democratic review into local authority governance. <coughs> and I am happy to await, you await the outcome of that piece of work, we'll get that sometime in September, I believe. And the LDA team also offered us some advice we need to be confident and stop looking back. We constantly hear the reframe, we used to do this, we used to do that. We cannot do that anymore. They encourage us to make a transition. We are finished putting things right and now we need to take the confidence we have we have gained through this our achievements and look to the future. The Peer Challenge Report congratulates us on being brave and making difficult decisions in a nutshell. That is what leadership is about. It's easy to lead in easy times, and let's remember that we're leading our border through the most difficult economic times we have ever experienced. The people of Nose they need us to stay strong because that is the best way to protect them. And that means continue to confront our challenges head on and not hide away from them. There is, much more to, there is much more to effective governance than the ability to write a leaflet. We need to engage even more with our communities and help them to help themselves. Prior to the cuts, when we were asked to help, the council's response was always to go out there and help them. Nowadays, the answer is often, we can't afford to help you. Residents might well ask, well, what's the point of councillors and the council? Well, we need to find a new answer. We know you, you can get the help you need, and it shouldn't always be from the council. That's just going to be, 
the council's approach for members and officers, taking a different approach in the future, we will need to invest in training and development to help us get there. That's what our Nosley Better Together programme is all about, identifying assets in the voluntary sector and the community and helping those individuals and groups and organisations to build up to new levels. We need to revisit our borders of choice vision and decide where we want our border and what we want our council to look like after 2020 and what do we want to be in 10 years' time. So I will be instructing officers to start the process of working with you all and our communities with our partner agencies to review and develop that long-term vision for the future. The full reports and the action plan have been published with tonight's agenda. Members and officers in the council chamber tonight should be proud of their achievements over the last three years and that the peer challenge has confirmed just what a great local authority knows the attitude is. Before I finish, I want to thank members who are retiring or going on to new horizons in the future for all their work in making this council the best of the best. I'd like to start with Rod Smith, Dave Williams, Sir the Spal, and special thanks for all their support and advice from Chris O'Hare and, and Mike Murphy. I also understand that Councillor Mike Wynn is retiring this year and I would also like to wish him well for the future. So will you join me all and give them all a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. As there are no amendments, I will put the motion to the vote. Uh, may I see a show of hands? All those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Are there any abstentions? The motion is carried. We'll move on to item six, the Public Health Annual Report. Uh, colleagues, I understand that this year's annual report is a film on the topic of mental health and well-being in young people. I'd like to invite Councillor Shelley Powell to introduce this item. Healthier, happier children and young people is the theme for Nosley's Public Health Annual Report for 2017-18. As colleagues will know, our Director of Public Health, Max Ashton, is required to produce a report every year highlighting key health issues in the borough and work on going to address them. This year's report has been produced as a short film which explores the emotional well-being and mental health of children <coughs> and young people and the services and resources which are available to support them. The film recognises the importance of building resilience and promoting good mental health and well-being enabling children and young people to live healthier, happier lives long into adulthood. I hope that by watching our film, it's clear that everyone here has a responsibility to create environments that promote and support the emotional well-being of our children and young people. This supplementary document, plus, which has just been given, this amazing uh, piece of technology which will be used in schools and other establishments <laughs> contains a link to the film so that you can view it again and it also highlights some key facts and figures in relation to mental health and well-being of children and young people along with recommendations for implementation during 2018-19. I hope you all enjoy the film. Welcome to our Public Health Annual Report. This year's theme is Mental Health and Wellbeing in Young People. We would like to show you kinds of support available in Aurora, and these are our stories. I'm going to ask you about your share. Can you see any patterns? I have a really good look. And I want you to think about, is it the same on the other side? Okay, have a really good think about your shell. Now I want you to listen to your shell. 
Nii hea ma, mis on? Haval veel igud läss on. Nii hea ma, mis on? I was getting bullied in year seven and year five as well. It's like really stressful in school sometimes. And then sometimes in school the work is a bit hard and then you struggle and then you, you begin to give up but then you don't and then it's hard. I look after two people, I look after me and mum and me and nan, so I was a young carer. I, I suffered not just with anxiety but with um, depression as well and it's just very difficult looking after them. I was the worst version of myself, I was at the lowest of the low and Nothing could make me happy. Mental health is something that can really affect a person because of experiences that you've went through. That can be traumatic. Life can just be very busy, you know, very you know, overwhelming. Life happens to children just like it happens to, to adults. And I think the key difference is that children don't have the power to make the changes that can make that situation better. They sometimes Imagine what it would be like to be what people call ordinary and they wish we'd be with that person, you know. You know, the ideal in this society is that you come across as someone who is in control, you've got your act together and that just isn't the case for, for lots of us as adults and certainly for lots of young people and I think that's where the stigma comes from. We started out in this youth centre, this is the first group that we worked with and we've discovered that the main barriers are confidence and aspiration. So although young people have the capabilities and they have a lot of talent and a lot of skill, they don't believe that they do. You get picked on a lot and you get told to hide who you are even and say that you're not important. So I never identified myself as anything, even though I knew how I felt. For me, when I look at mental health, we all have poor mental health and good mental health. It's a swaying sort of like pendulum, and it's getting that conversation going where people are actually realising that, oh, hold on, this isn't just me that's ever felt this sort of thing. And I think that's probably the key the conversation early on. That isn't a, a judgmental conversation, but it's something that is about offering support. And it is okay to be sad sometimes, and it is all right to, have these feelings and have these thoughts and how can we tackle it then? Mental health. <laughs> Mental health is means when you're like you can't control your feelings like anger, sadness. You have to always control your mental health and keep it balanced. I assist children in the learner form good relationships with the children, so games or talk time. We'll have theme weeks that address some of those issues, which allows us in a really safe environment to pose some very challenging questions. Children understanding their own thinking processes and being really aware of what's going on inside their own heads so they can talk about it. We were making first aid boxes, but instead of doing plasters and band-aids, it's telling you what makes you feel happy? Things that we eat, things that we do. Got a woody monster, which he told you what he is. One of the staff at the end of the week, got to do a walk and bring you in somewhere and make you feel happy. The basics is providing safe places where they can come, be themselves, do their own thing. If you've been feeling like scared or so, you just hit anything on the drums and it's meant to let like, your feelings out. Teaching music sort of introducing that side of uh, being able to express yourself in a positive way. They have lots of games, comics, animes. You get to do cool drawings when they have a light box full of lights. There's loads of books any child would imagine. 
So we're here to teach them about art, we teach them about reading, we teach them about writing, but we teach them about social skills, we teach them about self-belief, we teach them about looking after themselves. What we see all the time is young people who aren't really given a chance or given a good start in life. We can help support them and work with them so that they get better life chances. Like I said, it's okay to be sad, let's write a song about it, let's you know, do a drawing about it try and get that conversation going and, and, and expressing how they feel. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't shed a tear just as long. Started practicing yoga and meditation and what I realised was that some children are really struggling. It's really important that children are given these skills to help them throughout their day and to know that they can always go back to mindfulness or meditation just to help them feel calmer. Teaching teaches me um, how to breathe nice and calmly. She taught us the sun salutation. I've been quite silent and I've been talking to myself of what I'm going to do. Some of the things that, that our teachers teach us to help us calm down it is a breathing method where you just breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. When I listen I can hear the clock. I could hear people outside walking and talking. We also discuss how an idea can be like a snowball and if you let it roll down a hill it can just get bigger and bigger and bigger until you just can't avoid it. What well, helps in school is that you might have a sad day going on. You talk about to someone that you feel happy about it. I was in Romeo and Juliet when I was Romeo. I wasn't of being able to do it since I'm quite a nervous person to be honest. But once I talked it out I could relax and and be the best room in your life could be. The main difference is a sense of belonging, whereby you just have plenty of fun and enjoyment in the lives. I've become more, like, completely the opposite of before, basically. Getting support has made it a lot easier to be accepted and just to feel like yourself. It's really important to me that you're valued as a child, as a human being, so that they know that they are important and that what they believe and are interested in actually matters and that we are really proud of them. You might feel like there's no way out of it, but there always is. You know, when there's a will, there's a way, and you've just got to, you know, hang them there. Just think about your memories of your happy moments. And make sure that you think of them when you're sad. I would say, don't let your emotions take over. Keep strong if you feel sad. It's important because, you know, you want to feel happy, never sad or happy. Just know that there is someone out there who does care and who does appreciate you for everything you are. Yeah, I think you should come here because you can make new friends and like, you can come here and like, be safe. That's what we want to do for the young people. We're here to get them to tell their stories and support them as much as we can in every possible way. It's a, it's a picture and I wrote you are you because you have to be you no matter what anyone says. The things that make me happy are my family and cuddles and my pet dog and Christmas. Swimming, chips, horse riding, singing, nice words, calling in. Pizza and cats and family. Sometimes quotes help you get on like say in a wheel or a stitch. Ohana means family. Family means no one gets left behind. My class is so sort of like my family and no one gets left behind in it. We hope you enjoyed our film. If you want more information, visit our website.
Are there any questions or comments on that report from members of the council? Okay, is the annual report uh, agreed? Thank you, we'll move on to item seven, joint authorities and combined authority. No questions have been received. So straight through to item eight, which is members question time. Um, can I invite councillor Carl Cashman to ask his question? <coughs> the unfair difference in land valuation, particularly in relation to Liverpool Football Club's purchase of uh, land in Kirby compared to the council valuation of Brownsfield in Prescott. Thank you, mm -hmm. Councillor Cashman. Um, Councillor Moorhead. Uh, thanks, Chair, and uh, sorry for that little lack of response to find something out there. Uh, colleagues, I'm sure we, that we can all accept that it might be difficult to understand why land set aside for one specific purpose is worth a different amount than land which has been identified for a different purpose. And it's especially hard to understand the difference when you don't have access to advice from the council, officers or documents. It's worth noting that this is a question from a councillor who does have access to that kind of support. In fact, colleagues, there is a whole page on the council's website which answers exactly this question. We put all of that information on the website because some residents asked us about it and because we wanted members to be in a position to, av to advise their residents. It appears to me that some members aren't interested in giving advice, they would rather ask questions because they sound good or because they yet could well be another chance to write something in the leaflet. Nevertheless, the question gives me an opportunity to go on record with the answer. Let's start with the valuation of Brownsfield and Prescott. Let's start by being absolutely clear that the council hasn't decided to sell that land. We are working on the business case for a new model to protect our park and our open spaces, which could, and I emphasize, could involve selling land at Brown's Field. If we sold that land to somebody who wants to build houses on it, it would be worth something in the region of £5 million. The land in Kirby, which has been sold to Liverpool Football Club, can only ever be used as playing fields. The club will not be allowed to build on it or sell it. It can never be used as a housing site. There is a specific way of valuing the types of land set by the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors, and that method results in a value of £160,000. So the simple answer is that one site is poss possible housing and the other isn't. You can compare apples with pears. But there's more on our website, and I think I need to point it out because it looks like Councillor Cashman doesn't fancy doing his own research. Anyway, our website also explains that Liverpool Football Club will be investing much more than £160,000 in return for the land in Kirby. In fact, they will be also funding the new playing field, playing pitches for the community, car parking spaces, new changing facilities and new landscaping. The cost of that scheme hasn't been finalised yet, simply because the tenders aren't back in. But I can say here and now that we will be getting something like ten times the value of that land with all that investment. <coughs> it's an excellent ideal for the people of Kirby and the people who use the sports facilities. Or perhaps Councillor Cashman would prefer that we build houses on these instead. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. Uh, Councillor Cashman, do you wish to ask a supplementary question? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Andy. Right, so, yeah, just to say, I think it's funny that considering council members uh, have had or have access now to information, they didn't have a clue what sites would be included on that hit list of 17 sites proposed by the council leader and cabinet originally. Um, what I would like to ask, Chair, is will the council consider the transfer of KGV Prescott to the town council as the town council have asked 
especially considering the fact that the town council maintains the land now. Thank you, Councillor Cashman. Councillor Moorhead, do you wish to respond? Yeah, your last question has been answered there. Written response has gone out to all members today regarding that last question. Uh, and if yourself or other members of your party had to send up to all the meetings that were held regarding the parks, you might have had a better understanding of what was going on. And again, just to point out to members is that we constantly get this uh, sort of argument from yourself, is why wasn't this information there, why wasn't that information there? But you had an opportunity on Monday night to attend another meeting about the regeneration mm -hmm. that was going, that is going on in Prescott. And some of the slides that have been shown early on tonight, you know, I mentioned just a few of them, the community fire station and police station in Prescott, Shakespeare of the North in Prescott. The fact that we're actually <coughs> delivering Better Together schemes, another £700,000 scheme that you haven't put any schemes in for, that I understand at this moment. I could go on and on, Councillor Cashman. You know, your, your question is, is what it is, it's spurious and just for the week. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. Move on to item nine, which is notice of motions. Um, Councillor Moorhead, I leave you have a motion you wish the Council to consider. I move that motion to the table, Ms. Chair. Thank you. Councillor C, I believe you wish to second the motion. Happy to second that motion, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Moorhead, do you wish to speak on the motion? No, thank you, Chair. Councillor C, do you wish to speak on the motion? Nothing to add, Chair. Okay. Um, are there any other members who wish to speak on that motion? Okay, before I put the motion to the vote, do you want to add anything, Councillor Moorhead? No, thank you, Chair. Okay, in that case, we will uh, move to make a decision. May I see all those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Would anybody like to abstain? The motion is carried. I've also been notified of uh, another motion. Councillor Byron, I believe you have a motion that you wish the council to consider. Yes, thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, Councillor Ross Smith, I believe you wish to second the motion? I'll be happy to second that notice of motion. Thank you. Councillor Byron, do you wish to speak on the motion? Yes, thank you, Chair. Okay. <coughs> on point A of the resolution, I, sorry, I can't see. <laughs> I would emphasise the question of shortchanging clients. We hear often about the restri restrictions placed upon staff who race into homes and barely have time to say hello and then are out the door. Sometimes the care worker will be the only person they see in the day. We should <coughs> treat our clients with real dignity and having quality time with them, which goes a substantial way towards that. In point B, it makes reference to training and the paying conditions of our staff. And if we want workers to perform at the highest level, we as a council have an obligation to ensure that our staff paid the real living wage. We provide permanent contracts and not the scourge of the industry that is zero hour contracts. By the way, this Tory nonsense about them suiting some people is utter tosh, if I'm allowed to use such language. They are a ruse to deprive staff of decent paying conditions. The idea that staff are not paid when they are sick and have to travel from job to job in their own time is an anathema to an employer who places respect on its employees. The overarching objectives of the Charter are to establish a minimum baseline for the safety, quality and dignity of care being delivered to those receiving care, which the Council is already actioning in numerous ways and members are requested to formally support the motion. Thank you. Councillor Ross Smith, do you wish to speak on the motion? No, thank you, Chair. Okay, are there any other members who wish to speak on this motion? Okay, uh, Councillor Byron, do you want to add anything before I put the motion to the vote? Okay, in that case, we'll vote on this. May I see all those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Are there any abstentions? The motion is carried. Moving on, um, Councillor Moorhead, I believe you have another motion that you wish the Council to consider. Uh, again, as, as on, the, on the papers, uh, Chair. 
Thank you. And Councillor Shelley Powell, I believe you wish to second this. Happy to second that, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Moorhead, do you wish to speak on the motion? No, well, speaks for itself, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Powell, do you wish to speak on the motion? No, thanks, Chair. Are there any other members who wish to speak on this motion? Okay. Councillor Moorhead, do you want to say anything? Again, no need to. Thanks, Chair. Okay, in that case, I'll put this to the vote. May I see all those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Are there any abstentions? The motion is carried. Moving on. Uh, Councillor Connor, I believe you have a motion you wish the Council to consider. Can I move that motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Sean Donnelly, I believe you wish to second that motion. Happy to second that motion. Thank you. Councillor Connor, do you wish to speak on the motion? Uh, no, thank you. Councillor Donnelly, do you wish to speak on the motion? No, thank you, Chair. Are there any members who wish to speak on the motion? Councillor Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as with all the notices of motion, I think that, um, you know, that we can support them all. Um, however, <coughs> in this particular notice of motion, and perhaps a little bit like the others as well, the fine words, and we're having all these notices of motion, but there's hardly any debate, perhaps because the, the words are fine, but it's all about delivery. And I find with this last motion, in terms of <coughs> uh, paragraph two in particular, draw our, uh, your attention to breathe clean air. And in terms of air pollution, air quality, we all know from that in, in terms of Nosley, that air pollution and air quality, that we're probably one of the worst areas in the Northwest and also in the country. We also know it's a contributing factor to the onset of heart disease and cancer. We know that pollution particularly affects children and older people. And we know that the main pollutants are from road traffic vehicle emissions and industrial sources such as waste facilities. We have the M62 and the M57 close to to my ward, we have 750 houses about to be built on the Prescott Park next to a waste facility. And then as we've heard with the public questions, we've got <coughs> uh, the threat of development on Brown's Field. Quite obviously, building on green spaces such as Brown's Field, Park, Park Children's Park, is not the way forward for this council, I would suggest. Chopping down trees is another way of polluting what fresh air we've got. It does, uh, affects the, the air quality and again is not the way forward. So whilst Labour's uh, notices of motion are all very fine and good in terms of wording and we can support them, there's rather a double standard when it comes to their policies and the way they carry them out. And there is no finer example in terms of children's health and older people's health than air pollution and air quality, which is sadly lacking in this borough, and um, Labour's policies to build houses on every spur piece of land that they can find for money. And to be, you know, to be honest, I'm disgusted with the Labour Council and I'm disgusted with the policies that you put forward when you put notices of motion like this forward and you expect us to support them. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor Donnelly, uh, would you, excuse me, can we have some order in here? Councillor Donnelly, would you like to uh, make a statement or ask a question? Yeah, just to follow on from the party political broadcast of um, Councillor Smith, which was factually in incorrect. Wherever you've got your facts about Nosley having the worst air pollution, yeah. can you please demonstrate it to this council? It doesn't say we've got the worst in the North West, Councillor Smith. Also, just to, just to remind the Liberal Democrat Party, under your government with the con Conservatives, energy prices shot up for all residents in this borough, 
and it's hardest to find a decent <coughs> energy supplier because you were failing to do something. This motion puts us forward to do something about clean energy and I'm grateful that you're willing to support it. But when you put a motion forward, we'll be happy to support something as well. But you've okay. not done that yet. That'll make a refresh. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Uh, does anybody else wish to speak? <coughs> Councillor Morgan. Uh, I think uh, Councillor uh, Donnelly's uh, nailed the party political uh, broadcast again. Mm -hmm. just, to, just to remind uh, all in the chamber, this is part of a, a strategy for the city region. Uh, all the, the local authorities within the city region are adopting a similar uh, clean energy pledge to their the respective areas. And we're bringing forward in the not too distant future a city region plan to deal with all of that. Uh, and again, I think uh, Councillor Donnelly nailed this straight away. Is that again, I think you would be slightly factually incorrect in what you've actually said. Uh, and I know there's plans coming for, for us to be looking at some sort of energy supply in the future. And I look forward to the debate we'll be having on that sometime in the new civic year. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Councillor Connor, would you like to respond before I put the motion to the vote? Yes, Chair, thank you. I think it's important that we realise, is what Nosley's saying here, is that going forward, we intend, with the help of the... Um, the UK 100, which we are part of, to improve and better the, the life chances of everybody in Knowsley. And with the city region pushing forward on these things, it's going to be a far better place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, we'll now vote on this. May I see all those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Are there any abstentions? The motion is carried. We move then to item 10. Um, there are no other urgent matters, but I would just like to uh, refer members to item 4. As Mr Gittins has now arrived, Mr Gittins, could I assu in, uh, assure you that you will receive a full written response to your question? Thank, Thank you. you. There's no other business. I declare the meeting closed. Thank you for your attendance.